tell you today is how I betrayed my mother when I was 15 years old. In my novel, List of Mothers, about the Holocaust of the Bukovina Jewry, there is one character, a girl. She's an orphan, and she rescues her younger brother by sewing robes for the Ukrainian peasants in the village near the ghetto. This girl was my mother. Also, she had only completed the third grade by the outbreak of the Second World War. She made a tremendous effort to complete her educational gaps in the orphanage in Tel Aviv. At the age of 35, already in the kibbutz, with three little girls of her own, she went to college. She studied, wrote, and had been tested in Hebrew, the language she learned at age 13. She knew German from home, Romanian from the third grade there in the elementary school, and Yiddish from the ghetto. She made a huge effort to study, to move forward, but I then did not understand it. I was ashamed of her, that she was not born in Israel, that she's not a kibbutznik and a suburb like myself and like my dad. When I was in the ninth grade, all girls had to learn sewing. It was a remnant from the perception, um, perception of a European perception about education that um, students need to be acquaintance with um, multiple content and skills that they might use uh, later when they are adults. Um, that's the way it was, and so all girls were sent to sewing class. With two left hands, I managed to thread the yarn into the machine needle while my classmates were already stitched a whole straight streak. When I finally pulled out a straight line of stitches, they were already sewing buttons. Our teacher, Devora, she paired her instruction with a constant strike and knocking of her metal ruler on her desk. And I was positive that she would not hesitate to struck my hands or back if needed. When we arrived at the final test, a toilet paper roll handler was lost. The stem tangled, the streak zigzagged, the cloth had been stained with tears of frustration. An evening before turning in the project, I knew there was no way the mission could be completed. At this point, my mother stepped in. She was a home economics teacher in my school, at our high school. She took the fabric, set with her sewing machine, and within 20 minutes, the mission was complete. A wonderful toilet paper roll head holder. She saved me. The next day at school, the teacher gave one look at the straight streaks, at the perfect stitches, she knew, but she asked me, who stitched it? And I gave my mother away. The teacher didn't hesitate for a minute. She rushed into teacher's room and she started, she started shouting at my mother, shame on you. A teacher in Israel is a poor cheat. Shame on you. You should be fired. My mom got a warning letter from the principal for it. Well, I guess I would have forgotten the whole incident if my mother had not come from such a practical culture, the culture of the Bukovina jewelry. Well, did we buy the fabric? Of course we did. We bought and paid. Also green sewing threads. Did we spend time on it? Yes, we invested, we invested time and effort. So can we toss it away now? No way. And so every time I visited my mother, also as a grown woman, 
I met this toilet paper roll holder, reminding me how I failed the sewing class and how much my mother loved me.